A warrior and a rogue facing off in the middle of an open field. The air is tense. You see them circling each other, weapons drawn. Then a swift exchange of blows as the rogue tries to gain the upper hand, but the warrior counters with a shield bash. The scene cuts just as the rogue stumbles back. That's right. Today we are going to go over outlining major outline sequences, uh, ultimately, uh, you know, to create high stake action in your writing. Um, you know, uh, action scenes are the heartbeat of many stories, but outlining them, that might get a little, uh, difficult, right? It might take away something, you know, what's the point of the outlining, but that feeling can be a challenge, but today we're going to dive into how to outline major action sequences like this duel between two seasoned warriors. And by the end of this video, you'll have a step-by-step -step approach to creating your own high stakes action scenes that are clear, intense, and filled with character driven choices, or at least that's the hope, right? That's the goal. Hope I can provide that to you. But Thomas, why is that important? Oh, well, let me tell you. <laughs> Uh, the, the, the reason it's important, the reason is because I know some writers feel like action should just flow naturally and it should, I mean, obviously you want it to read fluidly and not, uh, jumbled like a, a bunch of action sequences, you know, a uh, sword goes here, arm goes there. They duck. There is a punch. Like you don't want to necessarily do that, but that's exactly why an outline is so powerful because it allows you to control that chaos. Um, so before you even write out a pro or uh, you start getting descriptive, you start understanding the motivations. And remember, the motivations and positions, right? The positions of those characters, meaning where they stand on certain uh, purposes, um, why they do what they do, et cetera, et cetera, allows you to challenge them within the outline. So then you can start building on the fight once you get into the writing aspect of it. Now, even if you're a pantser or a gardener, um, knowing the major movement of an action scene will help you find your way through the scene. Uh, you know, even if you just as a pantser, if you're just like, all right, I know this character, uh, has these traits. I know that this is their position on the, uh, live or die element of protecting this village or whatever the case may be. And, uh, that makes sense. Uh, so even as a pantser, you need to know your characters, right? But you want to also understand what the beats are within that fight scene, because uh, where does it end? Where does it start? You don't necessarily have to map out every little thing, but think of action like a dance, because each step leads to the next step. And even though the characters are swinging swords or running for their lives, you, the writer, are controlling the rhythm, making sure every move has meaning. Now, more importantly, like all scenes, all chapters, all narratives, there is a setup a midpoint conflict, and a resolution to everything. And that includes a conversation. That includes an action sequence. That includes a battle scene. That includes a love scene. That includes whatever you write it has to have a setup. We need the, un the reader needs to understand what's going on, <laughs> right? And know, and know what's going to be uh, ultimately happening, right? And then the midpoint conflict, you need a little tension, you need some conflict in there, you, you, you need some stakes, right? And uh, more importantly, you need to resolve it, you know? However, it doesn't mean uh, the through line has to be resolved. It just means that moment needs to be resolved. And resolve doesn't always mean for the better. It means the conflict is resolved, but maybe it creates a new conflict. Now, every scene should have at least one of the three following stakes, pacing, and choices. I recommend trying to get all three of those in there. Uh, stakes allow us to have the tension build. What's at stake? Well, you know, if we don't drink the the, the antidote, we're going to die. If we don't get up those stairs within 10 minutes, uh, we lose the bet. If uh, What happens if you lose the bet? Well, okay, all right, let's figure out the stakes. You know, uh, this, this, and this happens. You got to figure it out, right? Those are the stakes. That creates a tension. Now, if they don't do this, then they have all these other things, the, the issue. Then it's all about pacing. You know, the rhythm of the movement within the story, how much information is being presented to the reader. Um, and then, of course, choices. Choices comes down to your characters making choices based on their positions. All right. Now, uh, most importantly, you want to be able to challenge, okay, challenge the character or characters in each of those main out 
line beats while allowing stakes to be raised, controlling the pacing, and ensuring that characters are making choices. Guiding readers through a scene is why there is structure, even when a pantser writes, there still needs to be a setup, a midpoint conflict, and a resolution. All things start, have a major turning point, and eventually end. Outlining ensures that your readers can follow the action without getting lost. It helps maintain the pacing, keeping things fast, but never too fast to understand. And most importantly, it makes sure your characters aren't just reacting, but making choices. Even in a fight, every decision should matter. Otherwise, it's just noise. It's all about character development. All right, now we're going to do uh, a walkthrough. This should be exciting. Okay. Oh, before we get into this, before we get into this. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Hey, how's it going? Uh, let, you know, this walkthrough is basically, uh, it's going to be two characters dueling, uh, a warrior and a rogue. Okay. Uh, both will be fighting for survival, but with different stakes. The warrior is trying to protect the village while the rogue needs to escape with important information. These motivations are going to influence basically everything within the fight, and we're going to work it out on the page. All right, let's do it. Let's get into it. You want to get into it? First thing is we have to establish stakes and character goals, okay? So what are they? Um, now, more importantly, we always start, we always start with what's at stake, because what's the purpose of the scene, right? That's the scene exists because something is at stake, whether it is dealing with internal uh, issues or external issues. You know, if something doesn't get fixed or they don't advance, what's the issue? Uh, stakes stakes are very important. They drive the narrative. Um, but ultimately, uh, let's see. Let's see. Um, how about the rogue knows if they lose, they will die, which is basically what we said in the beginning, right? So the rogue... We'll die if they lose. Lose. All right. No. All right. Uh, but what about the warrior? We got to figure out because there's two people in this thing. So uh, let's see. Oh, oh, yeah. I think we said it earlier. They got the weight. The, the weight. They have the weight of the village on their shoulders. There. Protecting the village from the rogue who, uh, who, uh, let's say, who is trying to escape with important information. Information. Uh, okay, so that feels that feels pretty good. So we have to establish this uh, ultimately. Right. Um, so let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, oh, you know what else? You know what else we could work on? Um, like, what is the what? What do these things actually uh, create? So, all right. So I think. Uh, I think more importantly, we have to understand that the rogue doesn't want to die, right? That's that's really their motivation, uh, which is important. Um, so because they don't want to die, most likely they're going to be evasive because, uh, because they don't want to die. They don't need to kill the warrior they just need to get out of there safe and back to their people with the information so again maybe maybe the rogue is a better fighter than a warrior but their mission is to get the information and get out of there so we know that they're probably going to be a little bit more evasive as for the war oh. The rogue. I should write this. The warrior. Warrior. Come out and play. All right. The warrior, though, uh, is probably going to be a little bit more aggressive. 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 
and more direct, most likely, uh, trying to end the fight, as we say in martial arts, quickly before it escalates to a situation uh, that the warrior might not be able to handle. Whatever. Whatever. All right. Now, it's time to map out key beats. Okay? We got to map out those key beats. All right. Okay. Okay. You got to map out those key beats. You got to map them out. Because that's really the way you do it. All right. Hate when I do that. Had my notes on there. Had had my instructions for myself. Because I read off my script to keep me going. Yay. All right, where are we? Where are we? Okay. Boop. Gonna map it out. All right. Um, I guess ultimately what we want to do here is uh, you know, again, we have to do a setup. Uh, we got to do uh, a midpoint conflict, and then uh, we have to do an ultimate resolution, right? Um, so, so, uh, midpoint conflict resolution. We got the resolution. Boop. Okay. Now, uh, there's a couple things that we could do here. The first one is, uh, you know, the rogue uh, is sneaking out from uh, the building with the information in hand. So we're already setting up that they have it. Um, they are trying to, trying, trying to sneak, trying to sneak, sneak by uh, uh, the uh, villagers. Uh, during the night, while well, keeping qu as quiet, I can't spell quiet, quiet as possible. I think I spelled that right. Yeah, I'll accept it. Is that quiet? Did I spell that right? Quiet. Quiet. Yeah. Quiet. All right. Okay. Uh, but, but. The warrior doing their rounds uh, 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 spots the rogue. All right, so that's the ultimate setup. So what I would also do here in the setup is start the fight, and we're going to establish their style. All right, so that means uh, the fight begins, okay? And uh, I might say... Uh, you know, maybe in the beginning we see the rogue using more, uh, I don't know, like faint and dodge techniques, right? Now, if you notice, all right, this is the thing. If you notice, uh, I'm using more broad strokes for the outline. When you're outlining, you can get specific, uh, but I like to go from the macro to the micro. So I like to be as broad as possible and then kind of shrink down to the micro elements of it. I would rather believe that the rogue is going to be faint and, and dodgy than explain what the moves are right now. I just want to get through the outline so my brain can start seeing the scene play out. So let's get back. All right. Um, uh, techniques. Well, uh, I think the warrior uh, will showcase their skill by blocking blocking countering yeah i think that's important because blocking is different than countering right so blocking countering and uh oh so blocking i should just so you understand blocking as in uh their attacks okay okay and uh, getting in there in the way of the exit. All right. So those three things will be the setup. So when I do the scene, I'm going to work out what I can to show the rogue. 
being more evasive and not necessarily attacking the warrior, but warrior, but just blocking the warrior, but then trying to attack the warrior uh, using attacks as a distractive measure to get into position for retreating out the exit. Okay. But then the warrior is like, oh yeah, well, they just block a couple of the attacks, uh, they counter and they get into the way, the way of the exit. Okay, great. But like all things, all things need a midpoint conflict. So what I would think here is like, I don't know. Uh, let's see. Oh, you know what? Uh, we could say the rogue trips up. Ah, the the Rangu. Okay, the rogue, <laughs> the rogue trips up, trips up, uh, giving the warrior. What do you think? A uh, a chance to take advantage of the rogue's misstep. Ah, 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 ah. Did I spell that? Misstep. Yeah, I guess I did. Not to be confused with Mister Born. Right. Um. After a few good hits, the rogue. Uh, I don't know. Throws. We'll go. We'll go old school. Handful of dirt into the warrior's face and dies. Now, yeah, I'm just making it simple, just to get kind of explain what's going on. All right, and then we need like a resolution. What happens here? Um. Okay. Uh, the rogue stabs the warrior in the leg. And uh, basically, uh, and escapes, and escapes. All right, there we go. Oh yeah. Uh, now, there's a couple things that I kind of want to bring up here. So, uh, let's see. What I would like to do, uh, and what I I enjoy doing, is now we're going to challenge these situations, uh, which will lead to opportunities. Um, I should say, uh, which leads to opportunities for the characters to make choices. Because remember, plot is what needs to happen. Story is how it unfolds emotionally uh, through the POV of the characters, right? Uh, or the emotional experience of characters. Yeah. So narrative is made of a plot and story. Plot is what needs to happen, and story is uh, how how the events unfold uh, through the emotional experiences of the characters. And uh, more importantly. The only way we could experience that is A, through their internal monologue, B, through their choices, three, their behavior, uh, uh, and four, their reactions, uh, among other things. But their positions and things also help with making choices on the challenges. Um, it's why if we watch Indiana Jones, uh, that opening sequence is so amazing because he's making a ton of choices. One of the choices is... Uh, you know, how he's going through all the traps and then how he makes the choice with the sandbag, uh, how he comes through and <laughs> he has to run from the boulder and how he's he's making choices to avert these these escalations. Right. And then ultimately he comes out and he gets caught and he makes the choice where he's just like, you know what? All right. Here's the here's the thing I would rather live, you know. But more importantly, it also shows that uh, he can lose. Which means we have created a uh, um, a threshold, so we know that this character doesn't always win. So now there's tension. We've set the uh, we set the bar, as one might say. All right, so let's do this real quick. All right, okay. Let's. I'm gonna take this off the screen so you can see better. All right, challenge, challenge. All right, the rogue is sneaking out from the building with the information in hand. All right. So let's do this. Let's do this. I'm going to turn this to. Oh. Boop, boop. No. Beep. How do I. No. No. I don't want to do setup like that. I want to do setup. Okay. Damn. And damn. <laughs> I think this will work. That did not work. 
That did not work. Oh, well. We're going to go old school. Old school. The reason uh, I kind of want to see the beats, you know what I'm saying? I want to see the beats. I want to see the beats. I like seeing the beats play out. Oh, Thomas, why did you do that? Well, uh, the reason I did that is because each section, the uh, beginning, middle, and end, will have their own, their own beats, all right? But the rogue is sneaking out. So that's the first beat. They are uh, ultimately trying to sneak by the villages, which I would say is a second beat, all right? Um, and then, then the warrior is doing their rounds, which is a third beat. And then, and then, as they say, uh, then so forth and so forth. There's a fight. The rogue uses faint skills. I could almost actually boop, boop. Okay. So the rogue is sneaking around. How do we challenge a rogue with information, uh, with uh, sneaking around, right? Uh, first, they are coming out of a window on the second floor and part of the wall uh, 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 cracks and they slip uh, catching themselves before uh, they fall too far all right they move quickly to advert or uh, to not get caught. Caught! Don't, don't you caught them. All right. Now, they are trying to sneak by the villages during the night while keeping as quiet as possible. All right. I don't necessarily have to challenge every moment, but uh, sometimes you kind of want to uh, do some escalation, right? So, uh, they almost walk uh, out. Uh, no, they almost walk into several people having a conversation about uh, uh, hot dogs being better than hamburger hamburgers. Uh, well, the debate is. Uh, going back and forth. All right. Back and forth. Hamburgers. Hamburger. I can learn English. Hamburger. All right. Okay. Uh, they wait until they uh, leave. Now, what else am I also learning here? Okay. First of all, I know that this is going to be a beat on the, sc the screen. I know that this is going to be a beat on the screen. I know this is going to be a beat on the screen. Not a screen, but uh, on the page. This is going to be a beat on the page. This will be a beat on, right? So I can look at the pacing in real time, right? And I know if I'm going to, like, for example, uh, the rogue is sneaking out from the building with the information in hand. How do how detailed do I want to get with that? Because remember, pacing is the, uh, the speed at which information is pre presented to the audience, right? The reader. So... I could get really descriptive here or I could uh, let it kind of just, uh, you know, as a, as a very uh, layman's example, you know, the rogue literally, uh, you know, the rogue stepped out from the window, uh, grasping onto the side of the building, uh, making sure that their hooks are tied into the wood of the wall of the wall. Right. It could be that simple. Or I could go into like um, he, cla you know, uh, clas clasping. Uh, clasping the uh, clasping the uh, the aged wood, uh, something he he had become used to over the years. And now I'm adding a little uh, quote unquote exposition, and uh, you know we're also getting a little insight into the character. So these all that's all pacing. You know, it's like how much do I want to do? And maybe maybe I want more internal processing for the character while he's trying he or she is trying to sneak out of the building so maybe i don't maybe i could take this out and so forth and so forth that's the advantage of an outline it allows you to kind of look at the beats because each each beat so the one a b 
Well, I should say one, two, three, and four are each a beat. And then uh, beat one and two so far have two additional beats. And four has two beats within it. So you have to think, like, how uh, how detailed do I want? Like, for example, this one I might just let the warrior, uh, the warrior making their rounds along the wall of the village or i should say uh the x the perimeter per perimeter oh my god holy all great uh writers have uh great editors sir <laughs> um and spots so that could just be the b we don't have to that then in itself is almost like a challenge right anyway so then the fight begins and when the rogue is da, 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 da. these are the challenges though this is a, the faint dodge technique uh, using attacks right and then uh if we wanted to we could go here and we could do the same thing we can uh, the rogue trips up uh, given your... so maybe maybe um da, 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 the rogue uh, gets advantage over the warrior. Um, turning uh, from a more defensive approach to an offensive approach, right? So how do I challenge that? First of all, I make sure defense is spelled right and offense. And then... Uh, and then the ultimate reality is that the rogue trips up. So that's the challenge. All right. Uh, I might even say that this, after a few good hits. All right. Okay. Uh, the warrior gets in a few good hits. The rogue throws hands. So now I challenge it. So that, that's how I understand the challenges of it. All right. With that said, let's do the third, third and final step which is character choices in action. Now, uh, to clarify, uh, it's important, it is always important to understand the character's positions, uh, uh, their motivations, etc. And uh, the characters need to make choices. They have to. If the characters are not making choices, then things are just happening and nothing is happening. I'm sure you've heard me say that numerous times on this channel. Uh, you know, when you read a page and you're like, oh, I, things are happening, but nothing is happening. And that's usually because characters aren't making choices. Uh, they're not uh, uh, emoting. They're not internalizing. They're not externalizing, meaning, you know, reacting viscerally or physically. It's just, you know, things are happening. They get in a the car. They arrive to the place. They talk about hamburgers, but it doesn't do anything for the story, the narrative or the characters. Right. But anyway, so you want to you want to understand what what kind of uh, positions they have, motivations, so they can make choices. Um, uh, for example, like if we're gonna if we're gonna I'm gonna take this off the screen so we can see better. So maybe, uh, right this this sort of is a choice, right? But let's go back to the beginning. All right. So uh, the rogue is sneaking out of the out uh, out from uh, out of a window of the building with the information in hand. So maybe when uh, first they are coming out of the window on the second floor and part of the wall. Okay, uh, they change up their stra strategy uh, and head to the roof all right now the reason is because they realize that the wall is weak and that it might be safe because they're closer to the roof so they choose to go to the roof instead of trying to get down to the floor all right and then that that is how they move quickly to get to not get caught they they basically climb onto the roof they climb onto the roof strategy all right What's another example of a choice here? So uh, they are trying this to be sneaky. They almost walk into several people. Uh, the way this this is the choice. Technically, they wait until they leave. Uh, scanning the area, 
before uh, moving forward. All right. Mm. Um, one of their friends uh, interrupts them. All right. So now we're challenging. All right. So one of their friends interrupts them, uh, telling them about an event uh, they should go go to at the end of the week. We need someone who is fast like you for the running games. Uh, it'll be great. Now, <laughs> the only reason I wrote that is because we know later on he's going to get stabbed in the legs, which would ultimately make it difficult for him to be in the running games. But anyway, so what choices does he make? He says, uh, this is, you know, he says, that sounds great, but I need to stay focused on my <laughs> duties <laughs> right now. Talk later. That is a choice. It is a choice. So they could have stayed in the conversation or they could have been like, or they do this, right? So there you go. All right. Now, ultimately, now ultimately, we talked about how these outlines work because you just, as we did, we just beat out the setup with four beats, and then the midpoint conflict has two beats, and then the resolution has one beat. That sometimes is pretty common, even in narrative. You know, the setup might be a little longer than the midpoint conflict. Um, you know, sometimes the midpoint conflict. This, by the way, I'm not saying midpoint conflict as an act two. Uh, that's a whole different story, right? So act one, act two, act three. Yes, act one is a setup of the narrative. Act two will lead to the midpoint conflict. But more importantly, it's really showcasing uh, everything you set up um, within act one. You're challenging everything you set up in act one and, and elevating or escalating uh, the stakes. And then resolution is usually fairly, uh, you know, doom, 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 pretty quick, you know, just do, 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 get it through, right? You know, like in Star Wars, <laughs> you know, they're like, we're, we're on the rebels base. Okay. We have the plans. Okay. Let's get on the ship. Uh, is Han going to stay or go? He decides to go. They're in the trenches. People are dying. The Death Star is going around the planet. Huh? You know, they, everyone keeps getting killed. Luke tries to do his thing. Han comes in and says at the last minute, the end of the movie, you know, like, like the resolution's really quick uh, compared to the rest of the movie. Anyway, um, so like I was saying, as we look at all outlines, these are generalized beats. And the way I would write, I might go like this. So I look at the first beat and I go, the rogue is sneaking out. Okay. Uh... Yeah. There's a deep breath. Uh, uh, Nicole uh, grabbed the side of the building from inside the room. Her arm. Uh, she exposed her arm to the cool breeze of the night air. Uh, come colder after the exp after the uh, the sea rose on the last uh, volcano explosion. Explosion. All right. So uh anyway. Explosion volcano. Oh, I spelled volcano right. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Um, all right, so that's a little bit of exposition, but she exposed her arm to the cool breeze of the night air. July had become colder after the sea rose from the last volcano explosion. All right. Uh, her hood fell back oops, fell back as her grip challenged the 
integrity of the wall, the wood, the wall, uh, the wooden wall, the wooden wall. Okay. Now, obviously, this is just a quick first run. I'm just showing you. All right. But what I'm doing is I just got this. I just took care of this. I'm setting up this. So uh, coming in. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, this little crack popped from the uh, this, uh, panel panel she held tight to. Her hand claws. Um, I would probably go back and find a weapon name for whatever the hand claws are. The hand claws uh, pushed. Um, Oh, oh no no split split center of the wood causing her to lose her grip all right falling a foot before grabbing oh before grabbing the edge uh, grabbing grabbing middle Grabbing. Uh, uh, yeah. um, uh, we could just say uh, falling a foot, uh, falling before uh, catching so on, uh, catching herself a foot lower. All right. Anyway. So that's just an example. I'm just uh, I'm just kind of doing this in real time. All right. Boop. So we did those two beats. So there it is. That these two beats, right? Now, obviously, if I go, this is like a, a zero draft ish or first draft ish, uh, you know. And I would go back for a second draft, and I'd start going, well, what I, what am I really doing here? What's going on here? Do I want to get a little bit inside her mind? Do I want to be like, you know, I could be if I wanted to get in her mind. He when it does that. Does anyone else have that issue with the with the what do you call this? Google Docs. All right. Um anyway. Uh so I might get in her mind, you know. Uh you know. Nicole took in her environment. The area seemed quiet. Quiet this time of year. Uh Despite being told uh, they were, uh, the village was planning an event soon, one that would draw the neighboring uh, uh, villages here. All right, so there's a lot going on there, especially. Oh, I spelled that right. Oh, I spelled that right. I'll take it. Um, but anyway, so now we're inside our heads, so now we get to kind of think about it, right? Like that, okay. Uh, but anyway, I haven't even gotten to this beat yet, but that's the point of the outline is it allows see some people I, I've heard in the past, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not saying you should outline if, if you're not really an outliner or if it's not what you want to do, like obviously, whatever helps you get the book out, get the book out, you know, do what works for you. I'm saying with outlining though, um. I'm not restricted to the line, you know, the rogue is sneaking out of a, uh, like this line, the rogue is sneaking out of a window of a building with the information in hand. Uh, you know, I, I obviously have to bring the information. I have to inform that I have to put exposition, but the way she comes out of the window is all free form. It's all discovery. Do I like that? Do I not like that? Uh, do I, do I want to be in the room a little bit longer? Uh, do I, I want to explain the wall a little bit more. Do I want to explain the surroundings? What's the ground look like, right? So, uh, you know, before catching yourself. Uh, another 10 feet. Uh, oh, yeah, I could write it out. Hard stone would have greeted. Gree, 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 greeted, gree, greeted her. Uh, in another 10 feet 
uh, greeted her. I think I spelled that right. Did I spell that right? Greeted, greeted her. Oh, that's right. Greeted. Give pull. Yeah, greet. Hello. Greet. Okay. Greeted her. Um, you know, uh, yeah, greeted her. Yeah, hard stone have greeted her in another 10 feet. If her instinct, instincts didn't catch her. Uh, stop her. Stop her. Ending her mission early. This information. Uh, yeah, this information. Eh. The mission that needed her to return back to her people with the information uh, in her backpack. All right, whatever. So uh, that's that. Oh, now I did. Yeah, I mean, okay. So basically, bloop, I took care of that. All right. So now I have that. And there's the beat. It just kind of plays itself out. That's the way I uh, that's the way I kind of was uh, taught to outline uh, through my years. And it's the way that I have evolved it myself. I've I've changed things up from here, uh, here and there, as one might say. And then uh, ultimately, ultimately, you learn what works for you in the process. You should be malleable and uh, uh, you should allow yourself uh, to change things up. When you find things working or not working, you don't always have to do it the way we show you. And by we, I mean anybody in the world. Um, but as as an example, that's how I do it. I broadly map out some stuff, then I then I go back and I add things to it. And these are all beats. These are all these are all beats. And if you've seen other videos of mine, this would be a zero draft. And I actually would write out the zero draft like this. All right. Ding, 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 ding. Right. And the reason I would do that whoop, is because I want to see what the movement is. So uh, with a deep breath and go, uh, grab the side of the building. She exposed her arms and cool. Uh, her hood fell back. Right. Uh, <coughs> so since this is all the way to the left and the, uh, this would be another beat, meaning like I know it's a new passage and it's a new movement. So the new movement is now. Now there's going to be a crack in the wood. Uh, hard. Okay. Uh, falling before catching herself a foot lower. Hard stone. Yeah. Okay. So that's all one thing. And then this is all one thing. But one that would draw the neighbors. Yeah. So this is the response to this. That's why I would go in. But anyway, that's how I do my zero drafts. I like to see the rhythm with the uh, with the with the bullet points. So the further I go in, the more I'm working a beat or a moment or a movement. Uh, the further to the left means it's a new it's a new mo moment movement. Oh Jesus! All right, all right. So before we go, I want to uh, I want to give you an exercise. Um. Basically, uh, think of a ch you could you could do this for anything you're working on now. But if you want to practice, uh, you know, basically, I'll give you some prompts. So, uh, you know, outline a chase scene. You got to think about your characters. Ultimately, why are they running and uh, who's running and why who's who are they running from or running to? Uh, but if it's a chase scene, uh, is it the POV of the people chasing or the POV of the people being chased? Uh, what's at stake? Okay, you want to map out the key beats like uh, like we just did. You want to see where does the chase escalate? Uh, when one character gains or loses ground, that's important to notate as well. The final moment of the resolution: Do they get away? Do they get caught? Whatever the case, because remember, there's always a consequence, but it doesn't consequence doesn't have to be good or bad. It's just the consequence. It's the result of what happened. Um, and by the way, it's not just who's faster. It's not just about the flashiness. It's about the character choices while they're running. Them choosing to throw something, them choosing to push people out of the way or push people down to become obstacles for the people chasing them is a choice, which then dictates character, which then 
showcases story but them just them just running and doing like flips and climbing up walls that's that's not necessarily uh quote unquote story or getting to see the characters um physically i mean uh emotionally and mentally in uh through action you know but um here, here's some things to write down so so if you're listening and you got a, a piece of paper and pen or you're doing old school uh, old school on the computer um Think of your opening move, you know, the setup. So uh, who who makes the first move? Is it a uh, is it a surprise or a plan? So are they are they going to A? Are you writing the people chasing someone or being chased? So uh, who makes the first move, basically? Um, escalation, you know, how, how does the tension build? Does one character gain an advantage? You know, are they being... Uh, do they end up in uh, an area where there's only one way to get out and they didn't realize that because the other area... The other escape door is locked or, you know, covered or something is keeping it from opening. So then they have to figure out a way to ultimately uh, get to the other room, you know, to be to be like, oh, we got to get to the door and get out of here. So uh, with that, then you want to think of the climax, you know, what's the most interesting part of the chase is there a turning point do the people who are being chased get one over on the people chasing them or if the pov is the people chasing them do they get one over them you know do they end up you know you ever see like where somebody's like running and like we we lost them and then like they they come out of a corner like especially in a television show and like you know the, the cops are there and they're like we got you we we took the shortcut you know like that would be a, a you know change uh, the resolution is how does it end, uh, who wins or escapes, and how does the effect. So let's say that was the midpoint where they're like, we ran and we took a shortcut and we got to where we were. So now they're right there and the resolution, you know, maybe they have a little scuffle, but uh, ultimately it comes down to, uh, you know, maybe the cops uh, knock the guns out of the people's hands or the, or the knives out of their hands and there's, there's a little scuffle and the cops end up getting the people so think about a chase scene uh think about like the beats within that chase scene how you're going to set it up ultimately how you're going to work the midpoint and how you're going to resolve it all right with that said uh i always like to do a final thought outlining action sequences more than just choreographing a fight or mapping out a chase it's about crafting a compelling narrative within the action itself it's about saying something with what's happening on the page. Otherwise, it's just becomes lots of things happening, but nothing is happening. Well, you want to always set up an action scene that leads to a midpoint conflict that concludes with a satisfying resolution. The process is all about attacking one moment at a time. And by having this basic structure, it provides a solid foundation for any action sequence. It ensures your scene has a clear beginning, pivotal moment in the middle, and a satisfying conclusion. Sure, it needs a beginning, a middle, and end, but it also needs to have flexibility within the structure. So while adhering to this structure, remember that it's a guide, not a rigid rule. Allow your organic developments within this framework to unfold as the narrative needs to, as we did. You know, I added and moved things around and... We, uh, I added some challenges, I added some choices, et cetera, et cetera. Action alone is never going to be as exciting as character-driven choices, and choices define characters. So with every decision a character makes during an action sequence, each one should reflect their personality, motivations, and current state of mind. These choices should also lead to raising the stakes that drive each new decision. Always keep in mind what each character has to lose or gain, the stakes. This will inform their choices and make the action more meaningful. Some people might act differently when their life is on the line than versus being the ones who are confidently in control. When it comes down to it, think about your character's arc their, uh, through the consequences of their actions. Good or bad, how does this become an opportunity for character growth or revelation? I'll say it often, challenge your characters, allow emotional truths to move through them and give them opportunities to make char character choices, no matter if the action sequence is a ship in a powerful storm, a fight through the streets, or characters playing a high impact sport. Outlining action sequences is a skill that improves with practice. So 
Each time you outline and write an action scene, you'll gain new insight into what works best for your story and your style of writing. Ultimately, the goal is to create action sequences that are not just exciting, but meaningful to your narrative. When done well, these scenes should reveal character arcs, uh, advance the plot, and leave your readers breathless with anticipation for what's to come next. All right. Next video in the series is going to be about overcoming obstacles uh, where we'll... Uh, the next video is about overcoming obstacles when it comes to outlining. And uh, we'll basically go over some common fears writers have about outlining, uh, like basically becoming stifled or boxed in by the plan and uh, solutions or, or resolutions uh, to those fears and how to kind of work through them, especially if you want to try outlining and you have these fears. Uh, this video might be helpful to you and get your mind off of those things. Uh, like what you saw today? Hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss out. Uh, and if you found anything helpful in this video, hey, let me know in the comments below. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Anyway, with that said, truth in action, peace and harmony. And as always, keep developing the right mindset. I'll see you next time. Bye.